So usually I like to put a little sample at this part right here to start the episode, let you know what's coming up and give you a taste of. But right now I felt I need the urge to let you know this may potentially trigger a lot of you out there, whichever way you stand politically. As far as who you might vote for, who you might not vote for, who you don't want in the White House right now, take this with fair warning. The following episode of Something Spectacular is just that, something spectacular. The views and opinions are mine, my own, as well as the guest on this episode. Please don't be triggered, please don't be a pussy, and please don't be easily offended. Otherwise, don't even bother. If you're not a Trump fan or aficionado or if you straight up hate Trump, I'm telling you again, don't bother with this episode. I'm being straight up with you. Otherwise, if you're able to keep an open and clear mind politically speaking, go ahead and enjoy the episode. Just don't talk. Just don't talk. Yeah. Who this? Those demons inside you? Mm. Oh. Oh. Let him go. Before it's too late. Oh, I'm dying. No way! I can't believe this! Oh no, man, come on. Oh no. Don't die on me. God damn it. Don't die. Fuzzy. Somebody did this. Something spectacular. Who this, of course. Back for another installment, another edition, another episode. Better yet said, and I had to make sure the visuals were right. I had to make sure the scene was scenic, the landscape is vast, colorful. Well, you know, it's it's an overcast today a little bit. That's, you know, throwing us off a eh, tiny bit. Could have been a little sunnier, brighter. Could have been. More like your disposition, of course, which is <laughs> uh, gleaming, beaming right now. So yeah. sunny. And radiant in personality, of course, but without further ado. It's well deserved. He can't hear it because he refuses to wear my headphones. He wants to wear his own little gimmick things over there. AirPods, allegedly. But, you know, keeping in sense of that. Something spectacular, by the way. On all DSPs, wherever you get your audio format of podcasting from. Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, etc., etc. Just search me right there. Something spectacular, S-P-I. C-T-A-C-U-L-A-R, by the way. So you know that, too. You can't relate, of course, with that terminology. But, you know, still, we relate in the ethnicity cloud that overcast over us right now. As we are in Flushing, Queens, of all places. In a park, undisclosed, a.k.a. Casino Park. It doesn't matter where we are. Because the presence is heavy. Just as right now, mine is, more importantly, yours is. But right now, listen. If I have to be appropriate, if I have to be formal in introducing my guest today here, who deserves all kinds of applauses, you know, nothing short of the right carpet, a proper intro, this guy right here is somebody I know for, oh God, I've lost track of how long right now, at least 15 years or so going on now, you know, uh, highs and lows, not so much in the friendship, but like he's been going through stuff at some point, I did too. Work here, work there. Doesn't matter. We all grow up in our own way, shape, and form. Since college, you know, going strong friendship-wise. No disposition, no... Sorry, not no disposition, no disagreements, per se. Nothing pending, nothing looming like that. But right now, listen, this guy. This guy right here. He's serious business. There's no games to play with him. This is the guy I go to as my consultant when it comes to politics. Because like I've said before, made clear before, and I'm so serious about it, I don't talk about that shit on the show. Just because I don't know. And I don't care to know either. I'm honest in that sense too. It doesn't matter to me because you know what? You lean too left, you lean too right, you might as well be talking about my cock. Because either way it goes, depending on the morning, which side of bed I wake up on, when I take that morning piss, it's going everywhere it can. So you lean too over here or there, wherever, you're wrong either way. It, you go deep into that deep end of that pool, you know, proverbially speaking, you're bound to drown. Absolutely. In misinformation, in, in nonsensical facts, you can't substantiate nothing. You're absolutely right about that. As this guy knows better than anybody, he's my political consultant, my political connect, who I go to. I try to put people onto him via Twitter 
as far as what he's got to say concerning politics because there's no one better than I know. Not because I got a small circle of friends and confidants, but because there's no one else I would trust on the news, on the radio, podcast, whatever, more than this guy right here. This is I am Mix 24 on Twitter. I am Mix Otherwise on YouTube, wherever you got to go searching. He is the political savvy one. He's a political analyst. He should be. CNBC, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, whoever else. The the What's that one you go to often? The Judge Report, the Drudge Report? Yeah, Drudge Report. Hit him up. Come on. Go to all of them. Why not go to him? Yeah. You know so goddamn much. I am Mix24 on Twitter, though. Check out his Twitter feed. He knows what he's talking about at this point right now because he's a grown-ass man. He's proud of it. He's from Flushing. And, of course, considering we're in Flushing, Queens, of all places, it's so appropriate for him because how big a piece of shit he is sometimes <laughs> with his attitude, his behavior. Wow. He's like that what, one. What a way to introduce me. Wow. He's like that one piece of shit that just won't flush. It just keeps swirling and swirling down that toilet. Eventually it'll wow. go down, but it won't go down without a fight. Wow. That is the man right there, of course. Wow. I'm proud to give him a round of applause. He can't hear it, of course, because he's, you know. Well, thank you anyway. Prick. Thank you for the applause. I love you, man. Thank You're you like a brother applause, to me. Man. Uh, but, you know, the, the Drudge Report, um, he's been kind of, um, I don't know what's going on with that site, um, but ever since the impeachment uh, period, um, like the, the whole disposition of the site has changed. Mm -hmm. It went from center right to to center left and it's just full blown hysteria from from the impeachment time until even now i don't know what happened happened between matt drudge and donald trump uh, because he was very supportive in 2016 mm -hmm. um he he was one of the main sites that got trump over the top and i'm not sure what happened within the four years i don't know if they had a falling out or i don't know if drudge sold the website to another group and it just it's just his name that is you know just remains on the site i don't really know um but yeah he has changed a lot the site has changed a lot i mean i still go on to it mm -hmm. to get news because it does have a lot of information that i use on a regular basis um but yeah he's he definitely um has changed over the past four years it's definitely something um noticeable amongst the conservative community would you say he's gotten soft or if he's still there i don't know i keep hearing speculation that um he may have sold the site mm. i mean the name remains it's kind of like the huffington post okay, okay. um like ariana huffington she found it and ran the huffington post and then she sold it to another group mm -hmm. so i don't even think she even runs it anymore it just has her name okay. huffington post it just has a name but i don't think she actually runs the day-to-day -day operations I don't know if, if in Drudge's case, if it's the same thing, that he may have sold it or something like that. That's, that's the rumor that I'm hearing. I'm okay. hearing that he has a non-disclosure agreement, which um, prevents him and any other party from, uh, I guess, letting the public know that he sold the site. We may find out after the election. I don't know. That's the speculation. That's the rumor. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, it, it, I guess it's just one of those those type of situations. The name is on the site. The namesake is there, but the content um, has changed dramatically over the past, especially uh, 18 months. Okay, okay. So you've been there long enough to see the change. Absolutely. Uh, definitely has changed. Absolutely. Hmm. No question about it. Does that make your job harder now to do what you do? No, though? not at all. Not you just at have all. to change the sources where you go to, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got. He's not the only person that I go to. I go to many other sources um, to get my news. And here, here's the thing. Here, here's how I actually started with the social media because I had actually... I actually stopped using social media um, for a long time. Oh, you barely used it when yeah. I Yeah, even when I, I even, you know, because we've known each other for, for about 15 years. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I got onto Facebook around 2007. Give or take, you know, yeah. Right around that time. And you were and barely I, on. <laughs> even then, you were barely on. Yeah, I mean, I was there like for like the college years or whatever, but even after that, um, I, I kind of like slowed down dramatically. Yeah, people started falling out in favor of me. They they weren't even like really like talking to me anymore. I remember people getting mad. At least the ones I saw comment wise were getting mad. You didn't post anything up ever. That's true. And I mean, when you I, did, it was like, "Where's more of your stuff?" I mean, I because I, I, I really cherished my my privacy. I don't really want my business being out there. I'm not like these other people that post every single <laughs> thing that they do, what they eat. What they drink, what they cook, that their house, that where they travel to, whatever. 
I'm not really the, the type of person that really wanted to expose so much of myself like that. I forget that. And yeah. I had deleted it. Uh, actually, today is seven years. Since deleting it. The day, today. This, this is um, October 11th as we're recording this, this um, show. Well, wait a second. How do you but even remember that? How would because, you even know that? Because I still have the, the original um, the, the download mm-hmm. of when I deleted the account. They, they let you like save like your profile and stuff like that onto like a zip file. Oh, yeah, like you can save your information. I actually still have it. Um, and one of the one of the files somewhere on the, on the computer, I still have it to this day. Um, so you 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 can actually save all your pictures and the, and the whole nine yards, all your posts, everything is saved on the zip file. Oh, and it's okay. and it's even dated and timed and all that stuff. I had no clue you could do that. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually seven years to the day. Um, but the reason why I I deleted it and I was off social media for years. I wasn't I wasn't on Twitter. I deleted Facebook, and they didn't have an Instagram. They didn't have any of that stuff. And the, the reason why was because um, I was working in the corporate world. I was working in, in banking and import-export and doing all these different things. And I, I didn't want the, the, the content that I would post on social media um, to be used against me in, in, uh, in a corporate setting. Mm-hmm. And so, so I deleted it. Be, way before Trump got involved, before he was even in office or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I deleted it years ago, 2013, so many years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't want that to affect anything. I Even when I had Facebook um, in my old jobs, people used to, like, friend, like, coworkers would, like, friend each other. Right. And I, you know, I would actively, like, block. <laughs> no, I'm saying I, I would actively block my coworkers from finding me. Not even lying to you, man. I will, I will get. I'll find their name. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is their profile. Block. I get this other person's <laughs> name. This is their profile. Block. <laughs> Boom. Done. Because I didn't want them to be friends with me. And then whatever I post yeah. is used against me. Oh, you said you said such and such thing. And I wasn't even political on really on Facebook. I wasn't no, even political on Facebook. Not at all. This this new Twitter account that I created is is mostly Strictly political. That. But Facebook wasn't really political like that. So I was off it for for many years. Um, and then in February, I said, you know what, let me, let me, let me, um, cross over to the dark side. I just left my corporate job and I was working in a corporate ladder. I was on and off, but I was mostly on the corporate part-time, full-time, um, left corporate America. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Cause I cannot imagine now how, how corporate America is post pandemic. I left pre pandemic before this whole lockdown and this whole, um, situation started um so i did open the account in february of this year i am not a bot nope, nope. and like everyone says i have forty seven thousand tweets and those are all my tweets holy shit you're at that those are those are those are all my tweets yeah oh god damn. yeah yeah shit. those are all mine this is i'm not a bot i'm a real person that actually mans the account i'm touching see Tangible. every every single tweet that i have posted um it, it comes from me Mm. It comes from me. Um, so, yeah, I decided to open the account in February of this year. And it's been one thing after another. It's been very successful. Yeah. Very surprising. Very, I got 25,000 followers so far. Um, I was up to twenty, almost 27,000. But, you know, YouTube, uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter likes a shadow ban, platform manipulation. It's so obvious. Every conservative voice is saying the same thing. <laughs> Um, that everyone's losing followers left and right. I lost two thousand before I started coming back. Now, yeah, like yeah. like the past couple of days, I actually gained two hundred, so I'm coming back up a little bit. Steadily, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I left corporate America, opened up the Twitter account, and I wanted to post, you know, political content. I didn't have a gimmick at first. I was just randomly posting stuff. It was political in nature, but it wasn't to the effect that it is now. Like I'm much, I like I know what I want to do. What what the, what the whole gimmick of the of the of my uh, Twitter feed is, mm-hmm. which is posting news, uh, posting commentary, posting my videos. Uh, I think I'm like one of the few people that, that post news on a regular basis that actually shows their face yeah. and that actually posts uh, videos of myself, you know, live on uh, on Twitter. So, well, I'd like to think I had a little influence on that too. No, no, you out. did. No, you did because yeah. you you've been doing it. 
You've been doing it for many years. Oh, no, not in that realm. I mean, I actually called you out as far as, like, you know, show your face at least. <laughs> no, but, you know, the reason why I, the reason why I didn't initially show my face was because I, 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 I wanted to, I was trying to feel out the platform. I didn't want to just come out there and boom, like, hey, this is me or whatever. I wanted to feel it out first. Yeah. Feel Twitter out. I know Twitter has a lot of trolls. Oh, a lot. They're very nasty. I get, listen, uh-huh. I get them on my DMs. They call me all type of different names. I, I, you, should, you should see my DM list. Scroll down. There's pe- pe- person after person after person. We'll have to take a glance a lo- at that. At least show me, I mean. You know, so that'd a be lot, fun. A lot, of, a lot of people DM me all the time, and I love it. I uh, really appreciate it. You know, a lot of support. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of haters, but I delete the haters. But I get a lot of support from you guys. Um, but, yeah, once, once – um, I was a so-called, like, shit poster. I was like, ah, I'm going to shit post on Twitter and – not take it too seriously. Right. But then once I found a gimmick which to like post real time news, I think that's when um the 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 platform started to grow. And obviously twenty five thousand should have been at thirty thousand. By now, yeah, I'm surprised. Should have been, but Twitter, you know, it's manipulating. This is the election season. We're in the peak season of it right now. Yeah. We're in the midst of it. This is peak time. What is it like twenty something days yeah. now to recording? Right? Yeah, so we we got a ways to go. Not too long now, but no, we got a ways to go. Um, it's really picked up a lot of steam. I'm picking up steam again after falling off. I'm picking up steam again, and on our way to the election, we go. I can't wait. It's going to be interesting to see what happens on November third and beyond. Yeah, well, funny enough, you bring that up now because we did just have the second presidential debate canceled because yes. it was yes. supposed to be held virtually. I guess yes. the spikes in the coronavirus has peaked. Yes. So it caused concern, rightfully so. And I guess maybe part of it might be the first one they had, which was kind of a mess. No, I mean, the reason why they canceled it was because President Trump's COVID diagnosis. You remember he tested positive for corona, right. he got sick, and then he was sent over to Walter Reed Medical Center for evaluation. They gave him this cocktail of treatment, this Regeneron. He's now pumping. Um, they gave him the remdesivir. They gave him a, a steroid for the lungs. Mm-hmm. Um, earlier this year, early on in the pandemic, he was promoting um, the hydroxychloroquine, which was everyone was trashing it, which hydroxychloroquine was, was, is basically a drug for lupus, mm-hmm. for lupus patients. It was hydroxychloroquine, uh, zinc, and the z pack and if you use those three in combination, then um, it'll help to get you to recover from the coronavirus within a few days. Um, here's a different cocktail. Whatever is fine. Um, you know, the media is going to do what they're going to do. Any, anything that the president says, they're going to trash it. But the reason why they canceled it was because of his diagnosis. Okay. Then the, the, the commission, the, the, the um, presidential debating commission, um, they wanted to change the format to a virtual debate. Right, right. You know, where Steve Scully, who is the, um, who was going to be, he's from C-SPAN, he was going to be the moderator for the second debate. Uh, apparently, he's, he was a former Biden intern, mm. so already they're showing a bias. Okay, okay. You know, there is a former Biden intern. Chris Wallace in the first debate, he's from Fox News, he does Fox News Sunday, but the guy's a Democrat. He hates Trump with a passion. Right. And it seemed like Trump was debating Biden and Chris Wallace Two, two against one, <laughs> you know. That's why you saw a lot of the interruptions go on. I thought that the first debate was an absolute atrocity, the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, I literally almost changed the channel. Really? I was that pissed off. I almost, I, oh, I was this close. I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. This, this, is, this, is, this debate is ridiculous. Hmm. A lot of conservatives don't like it. They, they, they don't like me saying this, but I, I hated it. I hated it so much. I hated the interruptions. I'm like, can you just let these guys speak? <laughs> and both of them were interrupting each other. Let these guys speak. Let Biden say his piece for two minutes. And if Trump doesn't like it, then, he's gonna, then he'll be able to say his piece for two minutes. Right. And I didn't like the fact that Chris Wallace, the moderator, kept on backing Biden. It was so obvious that it was a double team. No wonder Trump was interrupting Biden the entire time and it was a disaster. Felt the need to. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a, dis- a disgrace. So with the second debate, Trump was diagnosed with COVID. Mm-hmm. The, the moderator from C-SPAN, Steve Scully, he comes out on Twitter. Uh, I guess Scaramucci. I don't know what he tweeted, but then Steve Scully responded by saying, oh, Scaramucci, um, what do you want me to tell Trump? Like, he literally put that on a tweet. And I actually retweeted that. 
<laughs> he's supposed to be a, 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 a moderator for the second debate. It's supposed to be now it's canceled. And he's saying this on a live tweet, not on a DM, on a live tweet. <laughs> you think that we're supposed to believe that the Presidential Debate Commission is now um, unbiased? That they're unbiased, they're nonpartisan, they got nothing to do with politics, politics. they don't care about the political parties. Hmm. Um, ridiculous, ridiculous. So they wanted to change it to a virtual debate because of his diagnosis. Right, right. Um, now, sorry, Trump, sorry, to, to, sorry to jump in, but yeah. the virtual debate aspect, is that, would you think that was conveniently enough because he got diagnosed, or was yes. that already in place before he no, got diagnosed? No, I think it was because he got the diagnosis okay. that they had to make the change. So considering he's not 100%, they were doing yeah. that to cater to yeah. him, pretty much. No, they did say that um, he's clear to go. He doesn't have right. any um, virus that'll spread to other people or whatever. He defeated him. I mean, like I would say. like to see a negative test. That because too. as that of this help. as of this point, they have not announced and say, hey, um, President Trump tested negative for Corona. They, 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 no one in the media, even the White House, has come out and actually said that, hey, President Trump is tested negative for Corona. Like I said, hey, yeah, he's okay to go to to to, to campaign, and um, he, he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't have enough virus enough to spread to other people or whatever. Right, right. But right. we only we only know the language of tested positive or tested negative. Right. You want to right. see if the guy's tested negative. It would help. It would Not be this wordy language, word salad nonsense. Like, just let us know. Did he test negative? Is he, is he testing negative? Is he safe enough to go out onto the campaign trail, beating the public? Yeah. Um, with, with, a, with a negative test? Like, can you at least tell us that? I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see um, what happens. He's going to be out tomorrow in Florida, they mm-hmm. say, for another Make America Great Again rally. Great. I'm all for it. I mean, we don't have enough time left. The second debate's been canceled. Um, Biden is apparently doing a town hall with Stephanopoulos, who's, who's another <laughs> Democrat st- uh, stooge, yeah. a Clinton stooge. He was the press secretary for the Clintons back in the 90s. Okay. So he's yeah. worked with, he, he knows the Clintons well. <laughs> everything is rigged. Like, everything is rigged. It's a rigged system. So he was doing his town hall, and, and then and Trump, what I hear, wants to do a town hall um, as well. Okay. On multiple networks, I don't know how that how, how that'll work out. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but that seems to be the plan. I'm um, going right ahead. I mean, it's not like Trump has a lot of time left. I mean, he, he doesn't have time to sit in isolation for 14 days. He he really has to get back out there. Right, there's not a lot of time left. Do you so, think he really absolutely needs to at this point, though, or is it kind of in the bag for him per se? No, he no, it's to. not in the bag. You, even you, as a Trump supporter, it you would say he bag. has to still. And I know I have a pinned tweet that says that you know Trump's going to win in a forty state, forty state landslide and all that other stuff. But as far as having it in the bag now at this rate, no, no, he's got to go back mm. out there. He's got to campaign all of the polls, whether you believe the polls or not. A lot of people say every time I post a poll showing Trump down by five or eight or 12 points or whatever, or one point or whatever it is, everybody says it is fake news. <laughs> it, it, the post is any, – anytime I post um, a tweet out of uh, poll numbers, it gets a lot of comments. It gets a lot of comments. I don't get to read all the comments, unfortunately. But it, <laughs> but it gets a lot of comments. You get a lot, so. No, and people get upset with me. They want to unfollow. And if you want to unfollow, that's fine. It's a free country. Do Hackle, what you got to do. Kick rocks, whatever. Do what you got to do. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't make up the polls. These are just given to me. This is public information. I just tweet it out. You do what you want to do with the information. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, so let's say if we believe the polls, if we believe the polls and he's down eight points or whatever it is, or five points or whatever, then, yeah, he's, he's got to go back out there and campaign. Right. He doesn't have time left. Hmm. He's still got about 20 days or whatever days it is left. He don't have time left. Hmm. He's got to go back out there. Oh, it makes sense. He's got an election to win. Right. So another concern of mine was obviously when he got diagnosed with, or he came himself out with saying that he has it. Well, yeah. however it went. I don't remember, to be honest. But I got disturbed, as I'm sure you were, besides being a Trump supporter, yeah. just a human being with common sense, yeah. of how many people came out proudly to say, oh, I'm happy he got it. And then the farther end going as far as saying, oh, I hope he dies because of it, which to me was stupid because, mm-hmm. OK, you don't agree with him. There's a whole 
side of the country that doesn't. They're spread yeah. out wherever they are, all that shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But you don't wish death on anybody because, like you said, and like I consent with as well, he never did anything personally to you or me or anybody we know for that fact, too. <laughs> right, right. To even merit you want to say you want to see someone die. Right. Because, again, the coronavirus or whatever. Right. I'm sure there's pre- plenty of people that, like, paid witches or join the cult just to pray on oh, Trump's death. I've seen, I've seen the Church of Satan on, on yeah. Twitter. I've seen witches come out and, and, and dance for the death of Trump. I, I've, I've seen all of that, all of that footage. Um, it was disgusting. Yeah. Um, th- this is a guy that, you know, these people that are so obsessed, they have an absolute obsession to the point where it's like, kind of like worrisome, like, like, don't you guys have a life? Like, isn't there, like, other things in your life that you can contend with or contend to that, that doesn't have anything to do with the president of the United States? Like, can you just not, like, do you, do you not have it in your heart to just simply wish the man well? Even if you don't like him politically, even if you disagree with his political stances or if you don't like the way how he speaks or whatever it is, don't you just have it in your heart to... Say, hey, you know, this is the president of the United States, leader of the free world. I hope that he does recover. I hope that he does well to get back out on the campaign because you don't want to really defeat a sick president. You know, you want to defeat, that too. you know, yeah. 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 someone that, that has their wits about them. I'm like Biden, he doesn't have his wits about him <laughs> anywhere, but that's a subject for another time. But, you know, at, at the same time, like, wish the man well. He, he's going to him and his wife, because him and his wife tested positive. Right, and Melania too, right. You know, mm-hmm. wish them well. Let him recover. Yeah. And then when he's back on the campaign trail, you can go ahead and, and proceed with your criticisms. But the left, this is the modern day left. Mm-hmm. They don't stop. They, they, they have so much hatred in their heart. They yeah. don't stop. They continue on with their hatred. They continue on with the division. The, the mockery, the, the insults, they just continue it on 24-7. It just doesn't stop. There's one um, blue check mark, Jennifer Rubin. And Sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah you've probably seen her tweet because she's been out there. The, during the time when President Trump was diagnosed with the coronavirus, he and his wife, mm-hmm. the first lady, Jennifer Rubin was on a massive, and I mean it was a massive tweet storm. One that, it was just like every few minutes, posting something about Trump. And, and, and I understand that you're a news reporter. You know, that's your job. But like every few minutes? Not even I, not even I was doing that. <laughs> You know, like not even not, not even other normal people were doing that. And I'm sure it wasn't in favor of. Absolutely not. Mm. She was very nasty. She wanted she basically wanted the guy to die without saying it. And I retweeted so many people that said that they wanted the president to die. I retweeted those tweets because I wanted my followers to see just how mean and vicious they are. Mm-hmm. Very nasty. No need for it too, because like you put up on YouTube as well. You don't wish death. Simply put, beautifully no. put as well. You don't. On anybody, regardless of what you feel they may have done to you or your country as a whole. Yeah. There's no place for it, too, because that just brings bad juju to your life, if you believe in that. Overall, it's just really tacky, regardless of where you stand politically, because it's as clear cut as this. Like, you're on the Trump side of things, which is fine to do. Yeah. We're in a free country still. You can do that. Yeah. You don't do it obsessively. Like, no, I've seen no. going through your Twitter, you're not... Subjected to just tr- pro Trump, everything blindly believing him, everything yeah. he says is as good as gold. No, you've criticized, you pointed yeah. out things, obvious things that you know anybody should be able to. Right. I'm not Democratic either, so this isn't coming from Trump supporter, Biden supporter. No, I don't stand with either one. Right. Right. Just right, because right. I'm sure, as you've seen growing up too, we're from Queens, both of us, born and raised. Yeah. Ideally, because we're both minorities. Mm-hmm you would think we'd have to lean automatically towards being Dems, Democratic. Right. Because they're supposedly the ones for you, they're catered to your needs, and et cetera, et cetera. Bill Clinton was the first black president, and <laughs> Obama did it for you, too. <laughs> Here and there. Oh, I mean, yeah. The scandal, oh, the trouble yeah. he got in would kind of lead to maybe being a black president, you know, yeah. getting head in the Oval Office, which is kind of cool, admittedly. Right, But, right. you know, where's the fault there? I mean, right. 
he got and all he got that. impeached for that. For what? <laughs> how does that affect my taxes, or how did that right. affect my parents' taxes back when? Our right. parents' taxes back when? I mean, from a moral perspective, it's not he's because he was a married man. Whoa. But well, you know, Whoa. come on, well, Hillary, if come you on. Just go from from that aspect. Yeah, he was he was a he was a married man yeah. while cheating on his wife with this young at the time twenty something intern, young chubby thing. You know, I mean, she wasn't that bad looking to me, at least. You know, Monica. You know, I mean that that's what that that's that's what that was. But um, she was thick, two C's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wasn't yeah, like yeah. obesely fat or like you know sloppy. I mean, it it uh, it, it changed her life. That's for sure. <laughs> she would never find another man better than uh, <laughs> better than Bill. Yeah, than Bill Clinton. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, what what other man could top that? The president of the United States. I mean, yeah, nothing short of. I yeah. mean, who else is going to do it? Nothing short of a billionaire. Exactly. Like, who's going to really like? I mean, who would have really topped him though? Like the prime minister or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Only he would have superseded Bill doing that. Something like that. Like goddamn, prime minister <laughs> beat me to it. I don't share. But Give me um, seconds. No, but like you said, um, yeah, I, it, my my Twitter feed is like center right. Um, I do criticize, but you wouldn't Trump. deem yourself far right. And no, 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 no. Okay. And you know we've been friends for a long time, but I, I don't beat you over the head with it. No, 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 no. All the time like that, you know. No, I don't really, no. I don't really, I'm at don't all. Really do that. Actually, at all, yeah. I wouldn't even say that. You just retweet what makes sense to you, what you I, yeah. I'm sure co-sign with, but also you put out there. What's actually substantial too? Oh yeah, because I, I trashed the hell out of the debates. I, I trashed that thing. Um, so. I didn't like the the whole rioting and all of that stuff that's been going on the past few months. Mm-hmm. I mean, going back to the George Floyd thing. So we're going through this lockdown. Um, everyone's losing their jobs. Fifty million people out of work. Yeah. Um, or working from home or whatever the situation is. Everything is shut down. So people are cooped up in their house. Yeah. For yeah. months. You know, but this was heavy handed lockdown. And it was only a matter of time that something was going to pop off. Yeah, of course. It was only a matter of time. I'm like, you can have a combination of 50 million out of work. They're not, they get an unemployment. Some people are having a hard time even getting that. Right, right. Unemployment. Even in New York and in other, in Florida and other states, California, they can't even afford to pay their workers in California. Unemployment. Newsome is running around trying to borrow money to pay these um, unemployed workers. So that's another issue. Yeah. Um, So you got unemployment, you got lockdowns, you got pandemic, and then you got Memorial Day weekend. (laughs) And everything, the temperature is starting to get hot. Um, And this is where George Floyd, he was killed on Memorial Day when he encountered um, this this cop, Derek Chauvin, Mm -hmm. Who apparently um, they they worked with each other at a same night at a, club or something like a that. same nightclub right as security. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that they they definitely knew each other. Potential there was grudge. some. I, I think that there was some type of beef hmm. or something because there's no cop worth their salt that would keep um, their knee on someone's neck. Mm-hmm. For eight nine minutes straight, right? There's no without cop. a motive for some sorts. Yeah, and I saw the footage of what happened before it got to that point. And yes, Floyd said that he couldn't breathe. He had fentanyl in his body. He was drugged up. He couldn't breathe beforehand. Mm-hmm. But that does not excuse the cop for for keeping the knee on this man's neck. For a prolonged period of time. I don't care if he was drugged up. I don't care what Floyd did in the past. I don't care if he was in and out of jail or abusive or whatever the situation is. It doesn't give it doesn't give you the right to force that knee down that man's neck. You after like a minute or two, you you'll be you'll be passed out. Right, right. Especially with that if you're doing it heavy handedly, mm-hmm. you putting that knee on someone's neck, you'll be, you'll be passed out real fast. Yeah. You know, for eight, nine, ten minutes or whatever it was, of course the guy's gonna die. Of course he's not gonna be able to breathe anymore. Right. They're saying that oh, um, he resisted resisted arrest. 
I mean, in the condition that he was in prior to the whole knee to the neck situation, I mean, come on, guys. Like, there was like three, four cops there. Right. Or I think it was like three cops. All three of them could tackle that one man and put him in the back of the truck and send him out over to the police station. Right, right. You know, so I don't think there was any reason for that to happen. And, you know, everything is on tape for us to see. Um, there's no excuse for what he did. The whole country was horrified. And um, Derek Chauvin's going to get his day in court. Okay. And it looks like, he, you know, he's been charged with, uh, with murder. So he'll get his day in court and he, he's going to pay the price. But with that situation, the Floyd situation, the lockdowns, the, the joblessness, the, the, the pandemic, mm-hmm. a racial, quote unquote, racial incident like that, a white man attacking a black uh, 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 a white cop attacking a black man mm-hmm. set off a fuse. It ignited a fuse where you saw some of the worst riots. And you saw the footage yep. in Minneapolis. Some of the worst riots that you have ever seen since since Rodney King. Yeah, yeah. Since Rodney King. It was worse than, worse than Ferguson. You know, with Michael Brown, that whole uh, incident that happened um, during the Obama years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So with that whole thing, that racial situation ignited a firestorm where rioters were so frustrated. They had some, some pent up anger, joblessness, hopelessness, pandemic. You're locked in your home. No unemployment, no job, no, no, no entertainment. There was no sports. There was nothing going on. Nothing. So that combination set it off. And. Those people, they they destroyed billions of dollars in property. Yeah. Billions. They even tore down the very precinct where those cops. Oh, right. They broke into it. They, they, they breached because the, mm. the cops actually had to evacuate the precinct mm. because they knew of a mob that was coming in. They had it all planned out. They planned this stuff out online. So they already, they already had it all planned out that they're going to be at this precinct. The cops knew it. All of them abandoned ship, mm-hmm. got out of that thing. They barricaded it, boarded it up or whatever, but they were still able to break in, and they burned that thing down. Mm. Yeah, They burned down auto zones. They burned down uh, Arby's. They burned down a whole bunch of businesses, black and white-owned businesses. Yeah. To the yeah. tunes of billions of dollars. Yeah. What did you expect? I mean, I, 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 pre- I even predicted back in March in early April, that it's going to be riots in the streets. I didn't think it was going to be a racial riot that would, a, a racial incident that would incite a riot. I thought it would have been more of an economic situation. Right. But, Who would have but, expected but, that but be still, the trigger? Yeah. Right. But a racial riot will do just as much. You know, it was riots in Minneapolis. They had riots all all over the place in New York, and in, in Buffalo, down yeah. in, 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 in in Kentucky, in California, and uh, Chicago, and other places. So it's happening all over the place. Yeah. Crazy. People just frustrated. Now, here's another thing I wanted to approach with you because, yeah. again, considering we're friends, you know, we have trust amongst each other, too. Yeah. Again, I can co-sign as far as his Twitter feed's concerned, everything you put out there is concerned, that you're not being biased. You're not being self-centered as far as what you believe in has to go as fact, if you mm-hmm. follow me or don't follow whatever yeah but how have you been able to balance out the fact that you are black you are also a trump supporter which isn't few and far between nowadays anyway (laughs) no the the presence is heavy now yes and to some it's still surprising but it's there you know it is take it or leave it but there's also the fact that you have directly been not yourself thank god directly been affected but you are in the midst of black lives matter Mm -hmm. so how does that work for you as far as being able to put out what you put out on Twitter everywhere you're concerned versus what you get back in return? Oh, but Black Lives Matter. Why are you doing this to us or why are you splitting us up potentially? Because I'm sure you got yeah. a lot of that. I don't even I don't even consider my race when I'm posting what I post on Twitter mm-hmm. or tweet what I tweet. I do it from a non-racial standpoint um, as far as the, the Black Lives Matter I want to say clearly that black lives do matter. They do matter. 
But if you're going to go about it in a way where you destroy other people's property, you assault people for not believing what you want to believe in, you want to force people to say the words Black Lives Matter, you're doing it under force, not as a natural thing that you want to say, but doing it forcefully. And then the the founders, which is, which is three three black women, the founders, right? Um, they apparently they're they're trained Marxists. They, that's that's what they say. Mm-hmm. And then if you go on their website, the Black Lives Matter website, um, there's one thing that they don't mention at all in the mission statement. They don't mention anything about black men or black boys. Mm-hmm. There's not one single mention of black men or black boys in the mission statement. So just from that standpoint, as a black man uh, okay. alone, okay. Yeah. I cannot in good conscience support the group Black Lives Matter. Okay. But I don't have any problem saying black lives matter or all lives matter or blue lives matter. That's not a problem. So you have no problem with the ideology in and yes, of itself. I don't have. It's more yeah. the group that you identified now that. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're not inclusive. They're all black per se. They're, they're more concerned about trans life, mm-hmm. queer agenda, breaking up the nuclear family, all kind of different things. All black women's issues or whatever. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Of course. Yeah. But it can't just be them though. But when black men are the most disproportionately affected black men in, are in jail in droves black men are involved with black and black crime in droves mm-hmm. they're the ones that are dying out in the streets in droves right and to not even include them in your mission statement is a was a is a giant red flag to me mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. one of an organization that I, I cannot support because apparently they don't support me they don't support me. Right, right, right. So they don't support me. You're saying Black Lives Matter, but you don't even talk about the black man or, or black boys, black male youth. Mm-hmm. They don't mention any of that. Which ideally with them speaking Black Lives Matter, yeah. it should be inclusive of everybody yeah. without having to specify. And that's the most important group of all. Right, right. That is the most disproportionately affected of all. Mm-hmm. You know? So they don't mention that, then I can't in good conscience support the group. And then later on, I discovered that some of the founders were involved in witchcraft and mm. they're involved in communism and they were involved oh. with Maduro in Venezuela. They're involved with all these communist organizations. Cuba, um, the Chinese Communist Party uh, is funneling money to Black Lives Matter. George Soros is funneling money to Black Lives Matter and other bailout um, uh, freedom groups or whatever, uh, the freedom fund or whatever they, whatever they call them. Mm-hmm. Whatever they call those bailout groups. Kamala Harris, she supports one of the Soros groups where they bail out BLM and Antifa criminals. So they, so they go in to these cities, these BLM Antifa people. They go into these cities. They're not even from the cities that they're, that, that they're going into. They're from out of state. Right. That's been reported on all of the news networks. All of them said the same thing. So they're from out of state. They go into these states, bust in. They cause a ruckus, looting. Remember all of the looting that was going on in New York and other yeah, places? Yeah. The shootings in St. Louis, all over the place. They're breaking into Macy's and breaking into this store, H&M and that store, Rolex store, then they were broken into as well. Yeah. All of them from out of state. So they break, break into these stores, loot thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands in items. They get caught, go to jail for a night, and because these people are so organized, that they get bailed out within 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So BLM Antifa was running around looting, shooting, stealing, whatever, and then they get bailed out in 24 hours. Meanwhile, a conservative who was using their weapons, their brandishing, quote-unquote, their weapons to protect their home, they get sent to jail, get all of their guns taken away, they get arrested, they get indicted, like the McCloskeys in St. Louis, mm-hmm. where they have Black Lives Matter protesters on their front lawn, on their property, on their front lawn. And then the McCloskeys is the white couple in St. Louis. They had a private residence, a gated community, that somehow broke into the gates and got into the community. Mm. They come out, husband and wife, brandishing their weapons. Get off the property. Get off the property. 
and none of the BLM protesters got uh, arrested for mm. trespassing or anything like that. And if they did, they were out within 24 hours. But right, no. Right, right, right. But the McCloskeys, they get their weapons taken away. They get indicted by the St. Louis DA. It's, just, it's absurd. Mm. It's absurd. So conservatives are getting indicted. They're getting their weapons taken away. Well, BLM Antifa is running around doing whatever they want to do. And they, they, they're out of jail within 24 hours. It's, it's, mm. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the left weaponizing the, 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 the criminal justice system. And that's something that needs to be addressed in Trump's second term. That, that has to be addressed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why the, the criminal justice system is being, being um, weaponized like that, where only conservatives get in trouble, but, le- but left-leaning groups get out of jail in 24 hours. But that's got to be addressed. That's, that's, that's very troubling, and that's something that needs to be dealt with. It's alarming because I wasn't a fan either of, let's say, the unnecessary looting yeah. or breaking in just for the sake of, oh, everybody else is doing it. Let me take advantage of going to the Rolex store, this high-end brand store or yeah. whatever. Because I got to see, I'm sure you saw it too, but in the midst of it, I got to see where I live by Queen Center Mall. Yeah. I got to see, well, it was funny. It was a Sunday. I was walking back home and I saw a couple of guys putting up boards on the Macy's entrance of yes. the mall. Yeah. And I was kind of scratching my head still without realizing I wonder why. But then the next day, I passed by when I was on a break from lunch, working from home, of course. I passed by there again, and I saw that there was a group of police in front of the mall already. Yeah. Because they'd gotten word that kids were coming from, I think, Newtown or wherever. From, right. To break in purposely. <laughs> but they called it just in wild. time, too. Yeah. It's so wild. And, and you have the George Floyd thing. Mm-hmm. Then the Ahmad, the, um, no, well, well, it was another guy in Atlanta, not Ahmad Aubrey, mm-hmm. but was it, they didn't, they didn't write for that one. It was another guy that he was at a Wendy's parking lot or whatever. And he was drunk and the police oh, wanted right, to get him right, out of right. the car. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he got out of the car. But he ran, I think though. And then they chased him, right? Or yeah, they chased him. Um, mm-hmm. they got into a tussle. So the black man, he grabs the, the cops, um, taser, oh. saw taser in the cop or whatever. And then the cop, you know, eventually ends up shooting and killing the guy. Hmm. Was was it excessive? Yeah, because yeah, because you could easily have you could have easily caught this guy at another point. You didn't have to shoot and kill the guy. Mm-hmm. The taser is not going to really kill you. No. Not going to really do anything to you. I mean, I think that was excessive. What was really excessive though was the Atlanta DA. They went and overcharged the cops. Like mm-hmm. they gave him like the highest penalties, um, and um, even like including the death penalty, even including a death penalty sentence, oh. the highest charges, and overcharge them. So by the time they they go to court, they're gonna throw that they're gonna throw that that case out. Mm. Either charge them the correct charges, or let them go. <laughs> Don't like overcharge them. Just because you want to make a political statement, you want to make a public statement, charge him correctly or let him go. Hmm. That cop's going to end up going, um, um, they're going to end up throwing that case out. There's no way he's going to be found guilty of any of those charges. So I have to ask you in that case then, where do you stand in the case of uh, Breonna Taylor? Because that was a big mess as far as the yeah, details that, we, we from, have accessible. From what, yeah, from what I heard, they the cops were issued a no-knock mm-hmm. warrant. Um, oh, they were wit- given that. Yeah, but from what witnesses say, mm-hmm. they did hear the cops knock okay. before they broke into the home. Right. I'm hearing conflicting stories now that they, that they did not knock. They just barged into the home. But they could have still legally done that. Because no knock would imply they can just barge in anyway. They don't have to. They don't have to. But from what I heard, they did knock. And what I heard was that it was the um, her boyfriend who shot at the cops first Mm -hmm. before they ended up killing her. She got caught in the crossfire or whatever. And the bullets ended up killing her, and they, they you know, they, they, the city of Louisville did settle with the family, right? Twelve right. million, twelve million, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, I that that I don't know, man. I mean, she was involved in all kind of drug running, and she was with her boyfriend 
drug running and all of that stuff. They said that she was an EMT. She, hasn't, that, she wasn't an EMT for three years. So none of this nonsense that she was an EMT hmm. and she was up on her way up had anything to do with this case. She was involved with drug running with her boyfriend. Is that the a legend were, or was that uh, actually proven? That, that's, that's actually true. And the cops were after him. Mm-hmm. But she just ended up getting caught in the, in the crossfire. She's one of those ride or die chicks, you know. Uh huh. You know, and she ended up dying in this case. Right, right, right. Unfortunately, she's gone. The family got twelve million. Mm-hmm. He's still living. Right. I don't think he's in jail at all. I mean, he's out speaking and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, that's a murky case. Very messy. It's really sketchy. It's not a clean. It's yeah. not a clean cut like. Thing. And I don't mean to say on my behalf at least sketchy that I don't believe it or whatever she's guilty or whatever she, thinking that she died. I'm not saying that, but yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, the, yeah. as far as how it's been presented to us in general, there's so many loopholes as far as Absolutely. like what could have happened, what couldn't have happened. We will we will never know. The only person I would know is the cops involved. Exactly, they, they would. Know. Unfortunately, yeah. I wouldn't know the um, the attorney general in Kentucky, Daniel Cameron, the black Republican attorney general, mm-hmm. and he got. Trash the bits, right? Because Megan Thee Stallion murder, was right? trashing him on Saturday Night Live, mm-hmm. calling him a sellout Negro and all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, but he, he he was between a rock and a hard place. Mm. I mean, what can he really do? I mean, unless some of the grand jurors come out and discuss their side of how the case turned out. Um, it's a murky case. Yeah. Um, I would like to see more details on it, more evidence. Eventually, that'd be nice. But eventually, I mean, the cops were one cop was charged. A cop that was fired for shoot. He was basically like shooting aimlessly at everything. Right. You know, he was charged with reckless endangerment. Um. I mean, but other than that, we would have to see what happens. That's a tough. If ever, right? If ever, I mean, it's a tough. That was a tough one to to look at. Well, I mean, the at. sad thing is, a life was lost in the midst of it unnecessarily. Uh, uh, yeah. Unnecessarily. Um, I mean, but my God, like sometimes you got to like choose, choose the right people to hang around with, man. Don't choose people that is going to get you into the situation where yeah. your life is on the line. Right. <laughs> Don't do it, man. And then it's only a matter of time, too, in that case. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, speaking of losing big time and, of course, rest in peace, Breonna Taylor, you know, of course, regardless, a life was lost. That's the... Yeah, yeah, we're not denying that. Her, not her denying life that was lost mm-hmm. and the family did get a settlement. So, but you that, know, that happened. Speaking of loss, at least, I know you're not on that side of the spectrum, but we did lose the most likely candidate to maybe at least giving Trump a fight for his money. Um, of course, our, my favorite at least, just for the sake of how funny would have been giving speeches left and right uh, why does his name slip my mind right now? Bernie Sanders, I mean to say. <laughs> Good old Bernie. You know, Bernie yeah, Sanders. Yeah. He would have given Trump. And it's not like Biden. Um, I mean, they're propping up Biden. Um, he's leading, apparently, right now in the polls. Mm-hmm. Whether you believe it or not, he's up nationally. Uh, Bernie actually had real enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. People actually liked Bernie. They liked his platform. And it wasn't even so much besides people not liking Trump. They actually liked Bernie because of Bernie, not because, oh, he's not Trump, so we'll like him anyway. Yeah. Um, He he actually had people that would go to bat for him. Mm -hmm. Um, It's Bernie's fault that Bernie couldn't get the nomination either time. Now, since you're more savvy than I would ever be in that sense, where do you think the fault lied in him, I guess, fucking things up for himself? Um, I guess it would have it would have been like I guess the so called so- socialist stances he took on health care, on the economy, on taxes, on mm. green energy, um, and I think that turned off in the primaries a lot of the black Democrat voters. Okay, it turned them off because remember, black Democrats did not really support Bernie like that. Mm. They were more going towards Biden. Okay. So that's why Biden was able to win South Carolina. He was able to win on Super Tuesday because hmm. he got a lot of black support in those in those big states, Texas, all of them states. He got a lot of black support. Bernie 
for some reason, black folks, um, they just weren't, especially the older ones, the mm-hmm. older Democrats, they didn't gravitate to him as much mm. as they would a Biden. And you need the black vote. Yeah. Yeah. You need like 90 plus percent to win an election. Really? And he couldn't get it. Bernie couldn't get it. Surprising because yeah. you would think at this point now still, even if Trump's like not simpatico for everybody. Yeah. Bernie would have had that in the bag per se. But do you think yeah. in this case maybe the um a lot in Castro and what he intended to do with his people oh, might have fucked yeah, things that up too. too. Yeah, that I think that that turned Is that really where you think he took the nosedive? Yes. That was that was it. That was, yeah, that was it. Mm. That was it. And that's why he lost the Hispanics in Florida. Biden got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. South Carolina as well. There's majority black in South Carolina, huge black vote down there. Mm-hmm. You got to win a, you got to win the black vote to win an election. And he, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Biden was able to take advantage of it. And he was able to get the nomination by basically by Super Tuesday. So that that was it. Now, touching back on what Bernie said with mm-hmm. the communist comparison to Castro and saying, well, he didn't really do bad for his people, yeah. per se. Mm-hmm. I don't think the way it was phrased might have been proper. Had it been phrased or worded differently, maybe wouldn't have come off as bad. Do you think there was any way for him to say it at all? Absolutely or just not. Uh, anything dealing with Fidel completely. Castro is a negative. Mm-hmm. You, you're just going to yeah. turn people off, man, no, no matter what. You can you can phrase it in a way that's, that's all sunshine and rainbows. But when you're trying to big up Fidel Castro. Of all people, right. Of all people? Like, nah, man. The only people that you're going to attract is communists and socialists. <laughs> And in, especially in Florida, you got the Venezuelans and the Cubans. Yeah, they're not yeah. going for no communist socialist nonsense. They're not going for that. And then black older black voters in in South Carolina and other places, they're not going for that either. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's not a winning message. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think any future Democrat who wants to run on Bernie's platform, and I don't think Bernie's going to run again, but any young Democrat that runs on Bernie's platform, um. Castro cannot be mentioned by name At all. ever or Maduro or Chavez or any of those guys ever. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. You're not, you're not going to win a primary with that. So let's just pretend that Bernie never said that at all. Never uttered those words in comparison to Castro, whatever leading up to now. And let's just pretend, of course, too, Biden's not in the running neck and neck with Trump. Do you think, uh, uh, the Biden, do you think Bernie, would have actually had a chance to really take it from Trump. Yes. Yep. 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 Absolutely. He would have stayed the track. Bernie would have definitely had a chance. A- absolutely. The, the the country is so divided right now. Mm-hmm. And so there's 50% of the country that loves Trump, 50% that hate Trump. And because Bernie had a lot of enthusiasm among young voters. Mm-hmm. He actually had people show up to his rallies. No one was going to a Biden rally. And nobody goes to a Biden campaign now. <laughs> they don't even go now. And he got he has these circles here where he has five to ten people spaced out mm-hmm. and he's on a podium making his speech with his many gaffes <laughs> that don't that don't get any coverage at all except on, on social media. Mm-hmm. But Bernie would have had people coming out in droves. He would have had the young people coming out to vote. Mm-hmm. Because young people don't they don't come out to vote like that. No, no. They would have came out to vote. And Bernie, yes, and, and because Bernie is charismatic, he's strong when he speaks. He's not, like, old and frail like Biden is. He's not no. dementia-ridden. Ha- Biden has his wits. I'm a Bernie, see, Bernie has his <laughs> wits about him. Bernie, like, his mind is still sharp. Bernie was endearing, Bernie's too. Bernie's a strong speaker. Yeah. You heard a guy speak, he has a strong voice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think in that case, since we're from Queens, we can say this. I think the Brooklyn accent really kind of helped him in that yeah. case because it was endearing. Yeah. yeah. And he was like this old grandfatherly type of figure that that's lovable. He I was Larry said, David, kind of. I always said that if, in 2016, if Trump didn't win the nomination and Bernie did, I would have voted, voted for Bernie. Mm, okay. I would have voted for Bernie. 
anyone over uh, Hillary. a Jeb Bush or, or any of those other guys, <laughs> please. And anyone over Hillary Clinton, uh, that's for sure. I think that's a general consensus, too. <laughs> like, no <laughs> one wanted Hillary. Yeah. I would have voted for Bernie, yeah. So is Biden, let's say, just a notch above Hillary, but nowhere near Bernie regardless? Hillary's a stronger candidate than Biden. Mm. Um, Biden's much weaker, but the, the but the mainstream media is just propping him up. Right. They're propping him up with these polls. They're propping him up with these staged uh, debates. Mm-hmm. Um, these these feel good stories about Biden. Everything is positive with Biden. Everything is negative with Trump. Trump could blink his eyes, <laughs> and he would get negative press. That that's how divided um, the mainstream media is between Biden and Trump. He'll still take it as something demeaning when he blinks yeah. his eyes. Yeah, yeah. In an awkward Trump could way. Clap, and it was oh he clapped. He was clapping for the white supremacists. <laughs> He's a racist, and they would they would have said. They would have, nobody gets, they would have just got away with saying that, and people would have sopped it up if they would have believed it. Hmm. Just like the story with Trump um, um, in the Atlantic, they said, "Oh, Trump, um, he, he called these dead soldiers suckers and losers and Did whatever." Did he it or is. no? I, I, I completely fake story. Hmm. I don't believe that story for one second. But there's people that actually believe that story. They actually believe that nonsense. They swear up and down that yes, that story was true. Hmm. When there's been 20 plus people that have corroborated Trump's side of the story, saying that that that, that never happened, but pe- but once you put a story out there, whether it's fake or real, people are going to choose whether or not to believe it. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean that's just the way it is. You can put on any old fake nonsense, people are going to decide whether or not to believe it. Fifty percent's going to believe it. The other fifty percent is not going to believe it. Well, you would think they'd be at least judgmental enough to believe or not believe, but yeah. then there's bias, too, now. Absolutely Because bias. just, I don't like Trump, I'm going to believe whatever's a, bad about him. That was a typical him. election plot, a, a, a typical uh, plot to get po- Trump's poll numbers down. Hmm. Uh, that's basically what it is. But, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. 20-something days left. We will see, but um, mm-hmm. I don't know. He's got a tough road ahead, man. It's going to be tough. And I'm I'm afraid of what's going to happen after November third if if the election is close mm-hmm. that you know we're going to see civil unrest. Think so. Be prepared. Mm-hmm. Be prepared. You're going to see civil unrest, um, the likes you haven't seen in 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 decades. Mm. People are fed up. There's still a lot of joblessness out there. The economy has not recovered. The stock market is not the actual economy. Uh, a, a lot of people's jobs have not come back. Mm-hmm. Um, people's pays have been cut. People are still filing for unemployment. Right. It was 850,000 that applied for unemployment this past week. Oh, wow. This past week. Oh, right, with like restaurants here at least yeah. shutting down left yeah. and right because they have no choice to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's a, lot of that. there's a lot of hopelessness going on. A lot of people are losing faith in the political system. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the next riots are they're going to be economic riots. You're going to see food shortages. You're going to see economic riots. You're going to see mm-hmm. a lot of joblessness. Um, the stock market pumps that you're seeing is at twenty eight thousand. That's all stimulus. That, that's all from the stimulus. Oh wow! Yeah. That's why they're running to mm-hmm. and rushing to get a new stimulus out there because they want to keep pumping up the stock market. They don't want it to collapse. Right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Belly up as of now, right. But then Trump did say, I believe, that no stimulus talk until after the election. No, uh, but they're actually they're actually negotiating again. Okay. Now, well, that's just a typical Trump uh, art of the deal situation or whatever. All right, he'll speak before it's actually yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically what it was. But they're, they're still negotiating Mnuchin and, Pel- and Pelosi. They're still negotiating. Um, we'll see what happens. There may not be a, a check until after the election. Mm-hmm. Um, Who knows? We have to see what happens, though.